Welcome to our lecture online. So, what are the final moments of a super giant star at the final throes of its life? Well, this is actually a very important moment in the existence of our lives and the existence of the Earth. It wasn't for the fact that the supermassive stars go through this process, we wouldn't exist. The material from which our bodies are made, the material that exists that makes up the Earth, simply wouldn't be there if it wasn't for the fact that stars do that. Only the very large supermassive stars. that are actually very unique stars. So, it is important that we go through this process, at least give it an idea of what actually takes place. Now, of course, some of this is modeled. We don't know exactly what happens, but because of all the observations that we've made over the years, we're pretty sure that it's close to this story. So, what is it that happens? Well, at the very end, the core of the star fills with iron, as we saw in the previous video. Once the core fills with iron, you cannot fission or fuse the core and expect energy to be generated. It now becomes an endothermic process where energy is grabbed out of the core, causing the core to collapse. But what happens specifically? The fusion process will slow down because it fills with iron, and now we're trying to get to the next fusion process, which requires more energy, more heat, a higher temperature, so the core begins to collapse. As it collapses, it does generate higher and higher temperatures. So this then causes additional fusion process to take place that grabs more heat out of the core. The core continues to collapse. And then what happens is the radiation pressure diminishes and gravity rules. What that means is that since that fusion process continues to slow down, there's no longer the radiation pressure to hold up against gravity and the core can do nothing but collapse. And as we saw in the previous video, this is a process that takes less than one second. As the core collapses, what happens now is that at first, the degenerate pressure from the electrons. What is the, the degenerate pressure? The, well, it's the repulsive forces between the electrons that are now becomes very important because the electrons are being squeezed to such a close proximity that they really begin to push back. Those are enormous forces. It does slow down the collapse of the core, but it can't hold it. Eventually, the core will become so dense and will exceed what we call the Chandrasekhar limit, where the electron degeneracy, the repulsive force electrons, can no longer hold back and the core continues to collapse, raising the temperatures to enormous size, eventually reaching about 10 billion Kelvin. Now, with 10 billion Kelvin, the photons generated in that collapse have such a high energy level that as they move out from where they're being generated throughout the core, they essentially destroy the nuclei of the core. In other words, all that iron that was built up gets shredded by the photons going through, the, going through that core. And so what we call that, we call that photo disintegration. So the whole core begins to get sliced and diced back to its original particles. The nuclei then gets reduced to protons and neutrons. All this again, of course, takes less than one a second. So now we have this enormously dense ball called the core of the, of the star, which is primarily made out of protons and neutrons. And then the energy of the photons is then used for the fission process. So what happens then is that this energy created by the photons now allows the fission to occur. So that photon degeneration is essentially the breakdown of those iron nuclei back into the original particles. So that's fission breaking up those particles. And then the core collapses eventually into what we call a nuclear ball. Now the whole core becomes as dense as the nucleus of an atom. Wow. So but in other words, that material is so dense that a single teaspoonful has a mass of 100 million tons. We have this enormously dense ball at the center of the star, completely made out of neutrons, electrons, and protons in a very dense format. And the density of nuclear material is 2.3 times 10 to the 17 kilograms per cubic meter. But remember, this is on the process of a collapse of the core. And we'll see in the next video what happens after that. <laughs> yeah. Is this like one of those moments where <laughs> what's going to happen next? <laughs> Cliffhanger. Yeah. Cliffhanger. You'll get the rest of the story next week at the same time. <laughs> next video. <laughs> next video. <laughs> All right.